Hello friends and welcome back. Today's episode is about how to chronicle your travels and it's inspired from the travel log of Marco Polo, the famous Italian explorer who uh, logged his epic journey to the Far East into the uh, 1200s. So historically the book is known as the book of the marvels of the world, Livre des Merveilles du Monde, and uh, through which he introduced to Europeans uh, a comprehensive look into this mysterious oriental world. So the exercise we are doing today is we will try to project uh, how he documented his experience and how we can apply those techniques in today's travel journal. Uh, the first thing that I learned from Marco Polo was his mindset. So obviously he was a bold spirit uh, with a curious mind. He took the initiative to travel to distant lands with the sole intention to discover. So best part is that he left a record uh, of the wondrous narrative of his adventures and this was kind of a precious legacy to inspire later generations. So we know that Christopher Columbus was inspired by Polo's descriptions of the Far East and he had a copy of his book among his belongings and he added to this his own handwritten annotations. And he actually inspired many others from that era um, that were interested in discovering and traveling the world. And a quick disclaimer also about traveling. If uh, your current circumstances doesn't allow you to travel long distance, uh, traveling actually includes as close as a nearby park that you can walk or bike to because there was there will be always something to learn and journal about. It can of course be extended into national domestic destinations within the country you live at all the way of course to internationally. So let's start and dive in into the 10 items that Marco Polo was very, very keen to log during his trip and how we can learn from him. The first thing I learned is geographic location. Marco Polo was very keen to always start his travel uh, log chapter by specifying the name of every single town, city, village, country that he visited. So to apply this into today's travel journal, I always dedicate a page for the travel route, including the name of the cities or the countries. Now, if you know ahead, you can do this ahead of time. You can choose to do it visually. And since we're talking about geography, that will be also including to specify the time and the dates uh, that you visited each of those places. Now, if you don't prefer to make it so visual, one another way to do it is just create a list in the beginning of your travel journal and you keep updating this list along the way. Every time you visit a city, you write the name and you can associate that with dates and time and weather as well. By the end of the trip, I had a total of 12 sites between cities and islands that I visited. Number two, the topography, which basically is the description of the land surface. Marco Polo provided detailed descriptions of the, all the delightful natural scenes that surrounded him uh, during his trip. And I usually, I only lately started to do this and since then I'm enjoying it a lot. So as you can see, some of the spreads will include sketches of the landscapes around me. Um, I describe, you know, basically the mountains, the sea um, and Many times I also try to annotate my sketch. Uh, so over here, that was like um, a place where I added the title, maybe the coordinates, and I start to add some descriptions, like the black spots were the caves, you can swim inside, and so on. If you are not into sketching uh, the topography, another way you can do this is just by taking pictures or maybe um, take a copy of the brochure and something that will describe the landscapes of the place you are visiting, like for example, this Japanese garden in California. Number three is cartography and landmarks. So cartography is basically the practice of drawing and using a map. Marco Polo was very keen during his travel log to highlight along the geographic route the interesting places and the landmarks he visited. Obviously, some of them were associated with legends or maybe folkloric tales, maybe some of them were realistic. Nevertheless, I started recently to apply this technique and draw maps. It's just a basic representation of uh, the National Park of uh, San Antonio Missions. And once you draw, um, 
like here the trail, if you add a blue line to it, that means there is a river that goes along with it. And then you start to very basically label the landmarks, which in this case were the Spanish missions. If you know the distance, you can associate this with uh, a scale of distance. Another example, what you can do is add a few small drawings, like this map for the Greek islands. Um, where are representing some of the landscape around you. Like you can start drawing those small triangulars representing mountains or maybe the waves of the sea, uh, maybe a representation of the caves and so on. Cartography is really interesting and it adds a, a very knowledgeable artistic uh, touch to your travel journal. Number four, uh, Marco Polo's travel log inspired me to log human geography. Everything related to the ethnic customs, population, traditions of the local community, a lot about the costumes, economy, the culture, and also what they were skilled at, the people of that country, or their main inventions. One of the ways I started to take note of this side of things when I visited uh, different historical uh, sites in Texas, I learned a lot about the lifestyle of the Native Americans community and the type of métier they had, like farming, ranching, and how did they spend their entertaining um, time. Also, uh, religious beliefs, uh, maybe some parts of their folklore and how they used to uh, invent over here little dolls. Country, And also, if they have anything exotic compared to the place you come from, for example, their currency, uh, the units of measure, and also the costumes are one of the very unique things that every country is special in a way. As you can see here, this spread highlighting a folkloric costume for a Greek lady. Number five is the architecture. Uh, Marco Polo did uh, describe and took note of different designs of different buildings. And this is something that really I like to take note of. As you can see here, an example of the uh, Capitol, which is from Austin, the capital of Texas. I also sometimes resorted to sketching like this tower from the Spanish missions in San Antonio. Uh, you can also dedicate a spread to appreciate the details of the windows and the overall design of sites you are describing. I also have another example here from Greece where we visited the hills of Meteora and how they are all crowned with those beautiful monasteries. Now if you are not into sketching, I have here an example where I dedicated this spread with pictures, printed pictures, to capture the beauty of how fascinating is the decorations of all the windows and the balconies in Paris. Number six is history and archaeology. Marco Polo did visit very beautiful historical cities. Remember he went through Syria, Persia, China, and all of those countries, they had beautiful historical temples and ruins. So, of course, I had to practice this technique in uh, what better than Egypt journal with all the details of the beautiful temples over there, uh, the outside, the inside, not only the temples, but also all the historical facts that we learned over there and all the writings on the wall and all of the fun or exotic historical facts. History and archaeology tells a lot about the country you are visiting and it's definitely something worth to add in details in your travel log. Number seven is the artwork. Marco Polo did describe a lot of the beautiful high degree of oriental artwork and all the artifacts. Most of the time when you log about the art, of course you can add your thoughts and your written description. Uh, but there is also a lot of visuals involved, right? Because this is like a gallery that will help you to recall the beautiful paintings or statues you saw um, everywhere. So whenever you visit a country, make sure to take note of the artwork. This can be uh, manifested into the artifacts. It can be paintings. It can be the folkloric dancing, uh, the certain type of singing. Any uh, form or shape of the art is worth to add to your travel log. Natural history, so which is basically the description of the natural environment. Marco Polo did provide many details about exotic uh, animals and birds, uh, rare plants, and everything that for him was not common compared to his homeland in Venice. You can also collect from uh, real uh, samples if the place is allowing or maybe you can buy them. Uh, it will be like a souvenir and also you can add it to your collection in the cabinet of curiosities. And those little natural items will be a representation of the uh, natural environment of that place. Especially if you visit a place that does offer less history and more of nature. 
Number nine and before last, your travel log can be a guidebook. Marco Polo did uh, take the liberty to rate the places of his visit from his own standards. He expressed his opinion about the people, the habits, the jobs, and so on. So it's totally fine that your travel log will be rating your experience in transportation, accommodation, restaurants, the sites you visit, and so on. And it also can be either a help for someone else, or maybe it will help you to compare your experience versus your expectations. And the last item is the travel memoirs. So Marco Polo included in his travel log his own special memories, especially with, with his very famous encounter with the Tartar ruler, he explained that he was received with great hospitality. So remember, you are the author of your own travel log, and it is not only to log knowledge, but it's also to preserve your beautiful memories and allow yourself to log your self-reflect if you visit a place that inspires you in any way. And even that the place has art and architecture and history to offer, it doesn't prevent you from logging your own experience and logging. Maybe it reminded you with a certain song, maybe it brought up beautiful memories, maybe you shared a beautiful moment with your family or the person you are traveling with. All of these are very valuable feelings and thoughts that are definitely worth to add in your travel log. I hope you were like me, inspired by Marco Polo's travel log. I believe that traveling offers great opportunities to self-learning, observe and scan everything around you, and definitely help you to develop um, a curious mind. So let me know your comments or your questions, or maybe if you have more ideas about um, important aspects that we need to capture while we are travel journaling. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.